How you guys doing? This is Andy with the Pork Rolls Almanac. If you're watching on Instagram right now, it's because I'm live streaming instead of doing my job of actually hosting this. Um, so please join us at twitch.tv slash Pork Rolls Almanac on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, all of which are at Pork Rolls Almanac. So for you folks that are watching on Instagram, I'm about to kick you off. You're going to have to go someplace else where I don't have to hold the phone the whole time. So, uh, yeah, this is very meta. I'm holding a phone to record myself on another service, recording myself. So go find us at one of the other ones. Thanks, guys. As for the rest of you, thanks for tuning in. Um, we have a really exciting um, Twitch today. Hold on. Actually, I just realized my heat's still on. I have my little space heater because my basement's like 50 degrees right now, and I just got home from work. So let me turn that off. Uh, so, yeah, we have a special guest today. We're going to be talking about cordage and uh, all of the interesting things about it that I don't know because it's not an area I've spent a lot of time in. So I'm really excited to uh, learn a lot and hopefully actually be able to use this stuff outside of watching it because I've got like a ton of brambles that need to get used. So, Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Excited to be here um, and excited to talk about cordage, which... You know, to hear anyone else be excited about is really charming because it's, <laughs> it's not like the sexiest of the skills. I think of all these skills, you know, whatever skills that you might sort of pursue. Uh, but it's sort of an unsung hero in a lot of ways because it's such a major component and player to and facilitator or supporter to all these other skills. So it's a really it's a fundamental skill. And I think that that's what's important about it. Um, and everybody's going to be able to work with it. It's a really accessible skill and <clears throat> it can kind of lead you down a number of avenues. So, you know, I think I'll just kind of start talking about cordage um, and you can sort of help maybe guide me or if there are certain things that you want me to address. Absolutely. So, yeah. I've so um, before we even get going, um, how how universal is cordage like in terms of like has is this something everyone's ancestors have used everywhere i could not be more hesitant to a make <laughs> proclamations like that sure but at the same time i think of all things i'd be like yes prove me yeah. otherwise yeah uh, i feel like that's a hard one to disprove yeah you know like um when it's interesting uh, to me, there was a flint napper, oh, kind of, okay. there's a flint napper, Tim Baker, and he was talking about stone tools. And when you're making stone tools and you want to make something that's symmetrical and something that's two sided or as a, like a biface, it's really complicated uh, work to achieve and achieve well. And we were doing that as pre hominid species. And with fibers in its simplest form, if you twist something up enough and it gains enough tension and you let it go, you've made string. So that's always really registered with me as far as how uh, how accessible that is. Or and you know, and I think that sure. kind of like spreads out. Yeah, um, like I, I have sheep, and like I, I use the drop spindle trying to make wool, and it's just like I'm terrible. I'm absolutely terrible at it, but I try. And uh, like it reminds me of that very much, like this whole process. It's like the same thing with a different type of material. Oh, yeah. I mean, you are making cordage, you know, in so many ways. It just might be called yarn. And I think drop spindling is so relaxing. You just have to like get into that space with it. Yeah, once if you're you good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Give give a give a call sometime because it, you just you can get in the rhythm. But I'm I'm not even the best. I'm just comfortable enough to I don't know fake it. I that's terrible. Yeah. Sorry, I, we all fake it till we make terrible. it. So <clears throat> yeah, so you know, so what I do think, um, and this is how we you know, in one way we view skills is sort of like as an individual, what are your needs, what sort of resources are available to you and then what is the technology that you can employ those resources and utilize to fill those needs in and so you're going to see people in different parts of the world 
have access to different cordage materials and they're going to have their own strengths and weaknesses and they're going to be employed in different ways. And that there's really like that's where the art of this comes into play that I think is pretty cool. Uh, and that, you know, we are in a really unique time where we have sort of this, um, you know, we can move globally, but also plants, you know, we're not working with just like, like static native populations. And so you can work with a lot of interesting cordage plants uh, harvesting, you know, outside of like the bank in the suburbs. Like I grew up in New Jersey and there was a Chase Bank and I'd be like, oh, look at all this sweet bamboo that I get to play with. That's like <laughs> landscaped or um, there's dracaenas that are like house plants that you can find in cafes or whatever. You can like work with those fibers and twist them up. And so if you kind of have a sense of what to look for and how to twist cordage up, it's really cool that you can kind of employ that. And then just moving out uh, outside of plants and I'll say... Um, if we're to take a look at cordage, there's your plant-based cordage, but then also your protein-based cordage. So your sheep, the, the wool that you gather from the, um, the wool, but also like the hide of the animal, the raw hide or the tanned hide, the sinew, which is going to be the connective tissue. So we have this whole house of proteinaceous fibers, and then we have this whole house of cellulose-based fibers. Um, but when it comes to just learning to twist something up, you can also like twist up plastic bags, you can twist up toilet paper. And so like, you can use that as long as you can see what you can work with and apply it. Um, I think, yeah, I think really the biggest thing is just don't work with anything that's going to be poisonous. So, so poison no poison ivy. ivy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No poison ivy. Uh, and that's, you know, that for this area, all I can think about. It is interesting. We have friends that uh, run a school in the tropics and, you know, here I can confidently move around the landscape, but there I'm like, can I touch this? Is this good? And it's just like dripping in cordage and fibers and weavable materials. Yeah. But, um, I know Peter Michael Bauer, I've talked to him about English ivy being uh, um, like a really good material to work with. And it's invasive in most places here in the U S at least. Um, so that that I think offers some really interesting if you're looking for that vine type material. Mm -hmm. And you're in Massachusetts. I am. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna have access to English ivy. Like that location has a lot of invasives. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we are swimming in invasives. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah, your bittersweet population is just excelling uh, as far as another vine that you can work with. <clears throat> Although there is the native bittersweet. So it's fun to like start to like delineate those distinctions. So that yeah. you can be you go down there. these rabbit holes of like all these different plants that you need to know for different reasons and why you need to know these subtle differences. And that, the next thing you know, you drive by the road and you're like looking at like, oh, it's weird that that tree's over there. Like it's with all these trees that it's not usually with. And like, that's when you know you've lost it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I do think that there is like a marker in time where you're like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a bed straw. And then you're like, wait, there's four. Oh my God. There's 34 types of goldenrod. And then you're like, oh, that's like a good space. That's a sweet spot to be at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you want to learn grasses. And then I think you're fucked, I guess. Yeah. The grasses, <laughs> I still don't, I don't have a good grasp on them. I, I know some of them, but not many. Uh, and that's mostly like in relationship to grazing. So no, I'm yeah. hoping to keep it right there. Like I, I don't need to be any weirder than I am. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what are we working with today? Yeah. So what I have in my hands is a stalk of dog bean. Um, and this is going to serve as a nice example. So we're working with a plant. We're working with a cellulose based fiber. Dog bean is not uncommon, although it's maybe not always the easiest to find solid populations of it. It really likes to move along rivers, but we're all hopefully maybe very familiar with its cousin milkweed. Look at these dead sticks. I don't know how well these register uh, <laughs> video. I got a dead stick and I got a dead stick here. Um, but this is milkweed and that's something that we're probably a little bit more familiar with. I would love to have an illustration. If you don't know milkweed, get to know it. Um, and then dog bane. So they're somewhat related, but what the two of these things have in similarity, as well as 
stinging nettle. Maybe you're so lucky to know stinging nettle, uh, which is a great plant in so many different respects, both in like, both how we as people can use it, but just across the landscape. And flax, AKA linen um, and hemp, they're all bast fibers. And bast fibers are gonna be, they're gonna be the fibers that exist between the sort of, mm, come close, outer waxy cuticle that protects the plant and then this inner woody herd. So I'm gonna be removing the exterior and the interior and I'm gonna be left, you're gonna see with this ribbon of fiber. And this is the cellulose and this is what we want for as far as twisting up cordage. These woody bits are only gonna be annoying and they're gonna cut at our fibers and no good. And this outer waxy cuticle is just gonna add mass but not add any strength. And you can see here that ribbon is already sort of peeling out a little bit. So you can use the same process with any of these plants. So again, this is dogbane or opossum cannabinium, milkweed, stinging nettle, flax, and hemp. They're all, um, they all have their sort of like nuances to it. Um, like the stinging nettle can be a little bit, have more gums and pectins. You know, when we look at global plants, you see stinging nettle and uh, at large, right? Like many different variations and versions of stinging nettle globally. So <clears throat> you can see, um, you know, Scottish lace uh, from nettle, and there's this really tall, beautiful Nepalese stinging nettle, um, and these sort of cottage industries that are based around that. That's cool. So these are bast fibers. And please interrupt me. I can, you know, yep. at any I, point. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, great. That works. So, um, so I've just sort of like skinned, so to speak. Um, I just opened up this dog vein fiber and I'm just going to pause and say what I really love about dog vein fibers and any of these bass fibers is that they are incredibly strong and really durable and so soft. So uh, this is where like linen clothing can be so nice, especially after it gets like worn and washed a number of times and why they were so treasured for their comfort. Um, this is the type of fiber that you want for clothing. Whereas oftentimes bark fibers, you're going to, you're going to be able to produce like heap loads and have armfuls of them, but they're just going to have a rougher texture to them. And so they're not going to be as comfortable to wear against the body, but it's something that you can just like make thick ropes for if you wanted to sail a canoe. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I want to ask, um, I think the thing that most people have in their backyard that if they're not plant people that they can recognize are like pricker bushes. Uh, oh, prickers. Yeah, and that's something that you can use uh, as a uh, for cordage as well. So I don't, how does that fall in terms of like softness or roughness? You know, what's amazing is that you mentioned that and I went, oh, yeah, huh. I never use brambles, um, but you can, you can kind of peel out the outer skin. And I've, I've been wanting to make baskets with them, which is sort of like the skill set that holds hands with reverse or reverse wrapping cordage. And I feel like, you know, just in you pausing me makes me be like, I'm overcomplicating this. Like go grab a handful of grass. If grass is outside your door right now, which is not mine, it's just snow. But like you can just grab grass and like twist this up. I'm just I'm we are jumping into an intermediate plant of being like, look at this beautiful dog vein stock. You know, so I think I most people listening are into plants. So I would hope they are in terms of the the, the ecology piece, like closer. Mm -hmm. But um, like, yeah, I, I think about like what is the most common plants on like that most people in North America would find It's probably English ivy and brambles, like in terms of like what we're talking about that are easily identifiable and like everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Look at my face being like, Oh, go. That's a tall order. Grass. <laughs> yeah. Grass. Uh, yeah, yeah. So moving beyond moving beyond that. Well, you know, I don't like in my area, um, I don't see a lot of English Ivy. It's sort of like a, it, it's not as common as down South of me. And, um, you know, 
it is kind of an area where proteinaceous fibers shine is that no matter what the animal is or mammal that you're working with, you're going to be able to have access to those fibers. And so there is a ubiquitousness and like a broad accessibility there if you want to like get your hands into some animals. Um, but plants wise, so I'm going to, we've introduced dog bane. I'm going to come back to dog bane and I'm going to kind of just like address this, what you're talking about, but a little bit broader. So <clears throat> when I think about plant-based fibers, right? Oof, plants, how many plants are there? There's a lot of plants. So then I start to like break things down into, well, what, what type of fibers am I getting from? So here I've illustrated an example of bast fibers and I listed out a few really common plants that are bast fibers, just to repeat for fun. Stinging nettle, hemp, milkweed, dogbane, flax aka linen. So we have bast fibers as one category. Then we have leaf fibers. So leaf fiber is really strong, but a little rough. And so what I think of is yucca or agave. I don't see agave a lot of places, but I see yucca everywhere. Oh, oh, and my favorite, Sansevieria. Um, man, Sansevieria has a lot of, a lot of names. Uh, mother-in-law's tongue, bowstring, hemp, snake plant. But what it is, is in every office and mall and like airport. And it's that flat green and light green variegated leaf. And people love it for house plants because it, you, it's so hard to kill and you can propagate it so easily. So, you know, in your future like a uh, dreamscape of like apocalypse you can go to the mall that's abandoned and harvest snake weed or snake plant because it's going to be everywhere it really persists uh so sansevieria i find that is really common <clears throat> um so those are leaf fibers and again like highest tensile strength as far as what you can pull apart highest tensile strength really kind of coarse Agave we see in sisal or sisal, depending on who you are and how you like to say it. Um, and then another leaf fiber that tends to be really weak, but really quite available is cattail. And cattail can be a lot of fun to work with. You're just going to let it dry out and then you can just twist it up from there and you get this like big bulky hulky cordage and you can weave baskets with it. It's also a phenomenal plant and I would encourage anyone to have a relationship with cattail. Um, so we have leaf fibers, bast fibers, and then I would jump into tree fibers. So again, I'm pretty Northeast. I don't know anything about California and I'm just gonna kind of speak to that. Um, it's fine. People can pop quiz me and I'll look funny. Uh, California doesn't deserve the attention. It's all about New okay. England. <laughs> um, and so tree fibers are great. Tree fibers are gonna be uh, my favorite basswood, um, elm, cedar, hickory, sometimes ash and locust kind of give you some fibers to work with. Mulberry is really amazing. Is that, is that black or yellow or uh, honey locust? Oh, I never get to work with honey locust. Oh, I wish. Uh, black locust. It's not great. It, it, it's not great. Uh, of all the lists, like blacklists attributes, you'd be like, it's at the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's fine. Black locust does enough for us. So yeah, black locust is a total champ. Uh, it's just sort of like a, it's like good to know about like medium kind of poor quality cordage that you can access sometimes because they can be helpful in different circumstances. So uh, a little south of me, like I can grow a mulberry, but there I don't find mulberries around here. And same with pawpaws, but they make great cordage. Um, so these are the trees. I'm just trying to think if I'm missing any heavy hitters. I just love basswood and elm. I really love elm a lot too. And some people think that there aren't elm around, but there's a ton of elm around. It's just that they don't grow into maturity. Yeah. Uh, and so I want to talk that we have vines. You mentioned English ivy, bittersweet, grapevine. And they, are, they can be workable. They're kind of nice to work with as baskets because you're not trying to like crank heavy turns into them. Vines are like quickie cordage uh, that can kind of, uh, but you're not going to want to like uh, 
had hard bends in which you're using knots and tension in the same way. Virginia creeper. Weirdly, a lot of times the ground runners are a lot stronger than the aerial parts. So just, you know, same plant, different piece. Um, weeds, vines, and then roots. Roots are really cool. <clears throat> yeah, I've never thought about using roots. So now yeah. I want to know more. Um, if you look at the work of people from the like native people of the Pacific Northwest, they would do these really beautiful spruce root baskets. They're stunning. Um, and so spruce roots are really quite malleable and workable. We'll use spruce roots at times if we want to, um, make like a fire by friction kit that needs a piece of cordage. We'll use spruce roots a lot. If we want to use like no contemporary man-made materials, really flexible, really strong. Uh, really woody, but flexible when wet. And when they dry, they dry into a, a, a woody structure. Elm roots and then the bark of elm root itself is really strong and valuable. Cedar can work really well. Um, and so this is really where you want to know your plants. And I find being so biased as a plant lover, um, you know, they knowing your plants is really going to help set you up and set you forth because it's they are so foundational. You can't just be like roots and then like grab a balsam for a root, for example, they're like as flexible as pencils. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so know your plants. Um, so, you know, roots are great. They're sort of like quickie cordage and they can be really strong. And then I think about things like willow. We always think about willow with weaving baskets, but the bark of willow is flexible. And you can take these woody like structures and you can, I'm like looking around real quick. So I have this willow basket here and I can crank the willow rod itself called a withy, if you were to use that term, um, and use these as cordage. So I wove in the basket with willow, but then here that is cranked and now it's also lashing and tying on my hand. So yeah, right. Okay. Cellulose. Oh, parts of plants, how that breaks down. And then what's available in your area? What do you know? And you're comfortable with? How are you going to process them? So we need to procure them. Then we need to figure out how to process them. And sometimes processing is really simple and sometimes it's a little involved. I can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've had a couple people pop in on the chat. I don't know if anyone else wants to pop in real quick before we get going further. Um, I think all of this is super interesting and like outside of the scope of what I know. It's like, I will just sit here and like download what you're saying, like an encyclopedia. Um, but yeah, uh, whatever you feel comfortable talking about, however long you wanted to spend doing this, I'm happy to be here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, we're talking about plants and we're talking about all these different reasons of cordage. And sometimes it's hard to be like, well, why do you need cordage? And I think it can be for all sorts of manners and purposes. You know, it really allows us to do a lot of things. You know, it allows us to lash bundles together. It allows us to sort of tie things off. I mean, truly just tie things off in so many different ways. Um, I find it's the skill that like when I'm like, I, you know, somebody's glasses breaks and you can like weirdly fashion a small piece of cordage to tie it on until like they can repair it. Like that's like a really day-to-day -day useful skill. I, yeah. uh, and, and, and it, and it doesn't take much. It's like a really simple technology, which, um, doesn't sort of, it can be a simple technology, but in a way that simple things can be really complicated depending on how far you want to go with it. So, you know, I'll talk more about cordage and plants and processing and how to twist things up. But then from here for people to go somewhere with it, it's like, oh, you got to learn your knots. Like you got to learn knots. Yeah, I fall back on the uh, gimp of my childhood for most of the things I have to do when it comes to knots. And then I don't know if you were, I don't know if we're the same age or not, but if you remember GIMP from when we were kids, the little plastic thing that you made basically cordage with. No, oh, I'm going to look it up. Yes, G-I-M-P. Okay. Um, it's like this plastic that people would make like bracelets and stuff out of. 
and it was just it's literally the cordage so now you have something new to look into yeah is it like that plastic lanyard stuff and you would like tie knots into anyway. uh yeah sorry this is like getting off track track a little bit but it's like this plastic it would you'd end up shaping it like a like essentially like a square or like you could do like designs if you got more complicated with it um but it's just like really simple like accessible like here's how to start like making a rope basically great yeah <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I feel like when I look back as a kid, I was doing like some complicated friendship bracelets that I would not know how to do now unless I <laughs> looked it up. Oh, the joys of being a kid when you just like have your meals and like all the time. Yeah, you have nothing but time. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, so I'm going to say it a few times, like go learn your knots. And even if it's just like a few knots, like if somebody knows four knots, like you can make four knots that you know work for most everything. Um, I unabashedly use like a clove hitch and a half double fisherman's for 97% of the things that I, you know, use knots for. But <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. So I'm kind of like giving more of like this, like thorough, like plants. There's so many options. Um, and I, I will... I'll hit up upon processing, but processing is going to be a little different for each of them. And I just want to say like, okay, so pause. We've talked about all these different elements of the plant world, protein world or proteinaceous fibers, much smaller world. You have your hair wool fur grouping. You have your hide, whether that's raw hide or whether that's a tanned hide. And you have uh, your connective tissue, your tendons, your sinew trying to think of other things. Mm -mm. Baleen, very illegal. So. <laughs> but a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and that's, that's available throughout all seasons. I can't dig roots right now. Um, a lot of the like dog bane and milk, the milkweed especially is going to be degraded by now that it's not going to be worth anything for other than making paper. And so that has a seasonal availability to it. You just have to already be comfortable working with animals or like bold enough to like jump into working with animals. And this is where, uh, or a farm or what have you. So wool, I don't, I don't know if you raise yours for hair or for meat, but, but um, wool is really available. <laughs> yeah. Um, I raise it mostly for, for meat and milk, uh, cheese more specifically. Gosh, so nice. <laughs> right? Like, it's hard to pass up sheep cheese, like fresh sheep cheese. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the wool was a secondary thing. I was like, well, I've got it, and they're Icelandic, so it's like nice wool. Uh, oh, yeah. You're raising it, Icelandic sheep? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're so, so beautiful. Yeah, they, they are very pretty, and I don't want to waste their hay or their wool, especially because it's such a pain to, to shear them. So it's like, all right, well, now I've got this wool. I guess I'm going to learn how to make a sweater because why not? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like such a thing to get into skills. You only have like so much time to be. Yeah, able. basically. I'm just going to be bad at everything. I'm going to know how to do everything. But I'm going to be real bad at it. <laughs> good enough is a strategy for yeah. sure. Uh, there's uh, a place for good enough. There is. There totally is. I, it, it really is a shame that we don't have enough time to learn all the things. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah. Oof, but today, I, we can learn one of the things. Yeah, and then I will disappointingly tell you that, like, the technology to move beyond a bracelet, like, get ready to put in some time, which you probably or maybe know just, like, <clears throat> personally, like, you raise the sheep. That's a whole endeavor. And then shearing the sheep, you got to clean the wool, and then you've got to um, you've got to pick the wool apart, and then you've got to card it, and then you got to spin it, and then you have to know how to knit it into something that's not going to be a sack that's just draped over you, or that's it, or <laughs> basically, <laughs> or <we> all... <laughs> yeah, basically we're all we're all sack people now. <laughs> it's very in vogue. Uh, sack dresses, very nice. Yeah. Um, over potato 
whatever they were, potato bags. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, I, I, just off topic, there's a lot to be said about like having that friend that's an incredible knitter and trading potatoes with them. So, yeah, there's always that. So, so, you know, so really just to illustrate like fiber arts require a ton of, of work um, and processing to produce material. And I think about how, like, why that was one of the first um, industrialized techniques. Uh, and um, yeah, so, you know, I have this plant. I didn't have to grow this plant. This plant grows wild. Milkweed grows wild. Stinging nettle can grow wild. You can also facilitate it because it's so wonderful and you can have heaps of it. But then comes the time of actually processing it. So <clears throat> I kind of mauled this in my hand. I, I can get back to it, but just as far as like a clean start. I'm just, while we talk, I'm going to process this and uh, work the fibers out. Um <clears throat> You know, if you want to learn how to twist up cordage, you can just practice with some yarns. You know, so much work is already done for you. There is, you know, bundles of string in like today and what we have access to can be like so cheap. Like you can buy a roll of jute for like $2, you know, like it doesn't really like lend itself to being like, that's what I want to reproduce is this. I want to weave an Ikea napkin out of fibers that I've hand processed. <clears throat> um, and yet there's a lot of reward and beauty into it. And I think it really helps facilitate that, like as a fundamental skill, it can incorporate itself in so many ways. Like, um, you know, I get hay bales and I save the, like the baling twine because I need to like trellis tomatoes or something. And I think about that as like cordage and like, you know, like what, like can't you lash together with, with that? And so how that applies broadly. I have this dog bane. Side story, uh, the first dog bean patch that I ever came upon was the Jets football practice field. And it was there that I learned as long as you ask people, hey, can I harvest? I work with children. <laughs> I teach the youth and kids, please let me onto this field. They're like, oh, sure, go for it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, that, what you're talking about, though, reminds me of like flour for gardeners or farmers. It's like, Oh, I want to grow tomatoes and all these things because they're expensive. But like I can get a 50 pound bag of flour for like 20 bucks. Why do I want to spend all this time growing, threshing and, you know, grinding and buying all the equipment to do it when I could just go buy a $20 bag of flour? And uh, like that's not really the point. Like it, it's about the skill itself. Yeah. As like a really like I excel in like onions and potatoes as a gardener, like I hear that. <laughs> so you, you're even I, braiding then, like with the onions. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. If I yeah, you know, all my fiber work and I still cannot get that perfect three part garlic braid that I see like, you know, like I feel like Italian grandmas are like, no big deal. Let me just and I'll put some oregano flowers in it. I'm like, <laughs> <clears throat> Um, so I, while we're talking right here, what I'm doing is I'm, I have these inner woody herds and I'm just popping them out and I'm just working up the stock. This is something that, you know, may or may not really translate so well. Um, uh, we've made as a school, Ruth's has some YouTube videos where like, this is really, um, illustrated. Oof. Sorry, I'm having a hard time right there for a second. Um, and what I'm just doing is that these that are in inner, inner woody herds, I'm just seesawing them out so that I can start to get some of the cellulose. You, this doesn't have to be a neat process. This is a pretty like low stress process. You can make a mess out of this and just yeah, pick so, your way through. So basically all you're doing is trying to get rid of all the hard stuff. Getting rid of all the hard stuff. Um, Simple enough totally simple enough. Interestingly, when it comes to cordage, like you can really overcomplicate this process with a lot of verbiage, but in the end, in the hand practice, it's like not 
it's really not that complicated at all. And I think that's important to note. Um, so I'm just working up the stock in sections about as wide as my hand, like four inch sections, seesawing them out. And here's that ribbon starting to form. <clears throat> um, and this is something that's pretty, pretty relaxing. Fiber is a really nice skill to do with people. It's like easy to hang out outside around a fire and do. Yeah, that's definitely like, I was just thinking as you were talking about, like, this is something I could see myself doing, like, sitting next to a fire, and like, not really thinking about it and just kind of spacing, which is like, in my personal opinion, like the best moment of Zen, when you're like, good enough at something you can just like space out while doing it and just like, like, oh, I spent a half hour doing this thing that I thought was gonna be tedious and annoying. And instead, it was like, taking a nap. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And I think like if you wanted to sort of like tie back to like who we are as like human, like a human species, like how many people through the ages have sat around fire and processed fibers is extensive in history. Yeah. Um, and like, and just for who we are today, like really calming to the mind. I, I definitely adhere to the whole like busy hands, calm mind mindset of things. Yeah, and I think that's how we're wired. Like, even if we don't, like, think of ourselves wired that way, like, if these are the skills that we've evolved with over 100, 100 plus thousand years, chances are, like, our body is going to positively react to us doing those things. And uh, I think that's exactly what that speaks to. Yeah, very much so. So I just glanced at the time, and I am shocked that it's 845. <laughs> You're just having too much fun. Uh, so I will talk about twisting up cordage. Um, but I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. So here, I, this is the ribbon of fiber that I pulled off that dog bean stock. And I'm just, I'm just running my hands over it. I am knocking off that outer cuticle. And sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes I want to be really refined in that process because I don't want any of that cuticle to remain because it's just going to add mass and it's not going to lend any strength to my overall project. So what my overall project is, is really important as far as um, how much time I'm going to put into processing here. So if I just need to like lash something together to like hang it on a wall, like I'm not going to put the time in. If I need to make like a bowstring, I might sit there and really comb it out and break down all of those fibers and those cellulose bundles so that I have a really refined product or like clothing. I want a really refined product. So you want to have your end goal in sight behind how much time you want to put into this. <clears throat> so um, right now, not that much. I have this. I'm just going to lean over here. Um, and I'm just going to grab up a bundle of fiber so it's going to be a little bit easier to see visually. You know, I do, Andy, forgive me if I'm like just staring down at the screen. I'm like, I feel terrible. I like, where do I look? I don't know. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> I'm having a blast watching you try to figure it out. Yeah, like I'm like, what? I'm looking in my thoughts. You know, when you talk to people out loud and you kind of go inward? Hi. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so... This is a bunch of dog bane stocks put together. And I want to twist this up. Maybe I don't. If I have this bundle of fibers, so I'm like teasing this apart right here. If I have this bundle of fibers, I can kind of grab on one end and then the other, and it's, it's going to hold some poundage. It's not going to be the most that it can hold. It's just a bundle of parallel fibers, and the string is going to break at each individual fiber itself. If I were to make this into a single ply, kind of like what you'd be making on your drop spindle. So <clears throat> I'm gonna twist, 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 twist. Now I'm twisting the fibers and this is regarded as a single ply. I generally, unless I can set the twist, have to maintain tension on either end. So that can be a, a bit of a limiting factor. 
But this is much stronger than just that bundle of parallel fibers. So this isn't bad. This now to like go all the way back to that first comment I made, if I twist this a lot, and I'm just gonna bring it down to my lap and roll it on my thigh, so I can get a lot more twist built up. I'm gonna twist, twist, twist. And then I can, uh, <clears throat> that tension is going to be such that I can like, oof, I can make sort of this like, not terribly pretty. It's wrapping around itself. It's a reverse wrapped cordage, but we're going to yep. make a pretty version. See, that's where I get lost when I try to drop spindle. Is, is, is plying? Yeah. Like, Let's 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 address this right now. You get your drop spindle out. <laughs> <laughs> it's upstairs, so we'll we'll save that for another session. And I yes, I am by no means the best at that one. So uh, so here so here would be like if I'm folding this in half and I want to make a two ply cord because a two ply cord is really useful. It's much stronger than your single single ply. A two ply cord. Um, it's just going to be a lot more functional and you don't have to maintain tension. A three ply cord is even better uh, as far as its tensile strength is higher and even at a smaller diameter. Um, and it just has a smoother silhouette. So it can just move a lot easier. Um, the, what you'll see, the, the best number of plies is seven. And so you'll see some modern fibers and ropes at, at the number seven because it's the most compact way you can arrange circles in a space. Anyhow, two ply, very solid. Okay. So what we want to happen is we want to build up tension and twist into our fibers and we want them to wrap around each other. For as much as I've taught this, I've never actually taught twisting on the computer. But I'm maybe just watching it very intently. Yes. Okay. And you and ask the questions. So what we want to do? Here's one ply. Here's the other ply. Here's the right side. Does that visually come up as the left side to you? Nope. That's the right side. Okay. Great. So here's the right side, and what I'm going to do. I can choose to twist in this direction such that the angle of the fibers are pointing like down and away from this other ply, or I can choose to twist towards that other ply. And therefore we're going to see the angle of the fibers pointing this way. I have one of two options. I'm going to opt and either one's fine. I'm going to opt to twist away so that I see the angle moving down and away from the other ply. I twist away. <clears throat> I'm working really close each hand is next to each other because it gives me a short distance. If I work down here, I have to twist a lot to build up that tension. So I work really close. I have a lot of tension and I'm going to bring it over. This hand, my non-dominant hand and personally my left hand, I'm going to just drop it down and it's going to pinch right at where they cross over. I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to grab this right-sided bundle. I'm going to twist away and I'm going to bring over. And now my non-dominant hand's going to drop down. I'm going to twist away, bring over, drop down. Working with cellulose, <clears throat> it can be a little dry. So to get a little extra purchase, you can just wet your fingers down and it makes a cleaner product. Twist away, bring over. This is, this is it. This is everything. <laughs> <laughs> twist away, bring over. Um, and now what we're going to get Visually, you're going to see it. Oh, look, this is what looks like a rope looks like. What it doesn't look like, and you're, you one of your twists is wrong, is if you just have that, just a bundle of twisted fibers. So we want to see these undulations of each ply moving around itself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's like watching magic. <laughs> if I was a child, if I could go back and be that child, as we mentioned, who had endless time. Like why, what sleight of hand would be the coolest thing ever? <laughs> ah, no time for that now. No, we got, we got baskets to make. Uh, I like might be tempted by juggling. 
but we'll see. <laughs> Juggling seems like something you could learn on a weekend. Like, it doesn't seem like, impossible. And it would, like, the payback would be huge. You'd be like, oh. It's let's, your party like, trick. It's a party trick, yeah. Let me amuse you children. <laughs> so <clears throat> here is, here's reverse wrap with a bunch of dog vein fibers. Um, you can take this further. One thing that's important is that like, I might want something longer than a foot. And so I'm gonna wanna splice. And splicing can be really simple. Splicing can look like a number of things. Um, splicing can be just as simple as, splice for two reasons. One, I need to add length. Two, I need to maintain equal diameter in my cordage in each ply. If one diameter, uh, if one ply is a lot smaller, a lot bigger, the it'll just start wrapping around itself and it won't be maintaining equal tension. Um, so if I need to add length or add mass to my ply, the simplest thing that I can do is that I can fray open this ply and I can fray open my fibers that I'm going to add and overlap them. And then when I put that twist in, it's just going to be taken into the matrix and I can continue on my happy way. There you go. I can, it's going to be a slight weak spot. If I want to avoid a slight weak spot, I can, weak spot. Ugh. I can fold this over and do sort of like an L and have it cover both plies. It'll create a bulge, but it'll be, it'll maintain its strength. <clears throat> um, so in this way, you can just make cordage on and on and on and on. And I think it's pretty nice. Like it's so relaxing if you have the materials that you can just have a piece of cordage that you've started and just add to it and just keep going on. And then all of a sudden you'll have that mass of cordage to do something with because, you know, this is going to be helpful for like a handle on a basket. It's going to be helpful for like a, um, a terribly like ugly anklet. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Um, but if you want to high fashion, no, this with your potato sack dress. Oh, I can't even say anything negative about potatoes. I love potatoes. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> um, but if you want to make a bag or anything, like you're really looking to put in a lot of time. And this is where I actually do employ drop spindling. So, you know, I do a lot of just by the hand twisting, but if I, want so here's like a bunch of drop spindle dog vein i end up combing them out pretty aggressively and employing techniques that were seen in flax technology where you're um breaking it out although i use like a modern like handheld tool which is a florist frog Oof, they're really sharp um and they're like miniature hackles uh but that way you can really make so like here's like a dog vein bag um but this is like you know, get into cordage, get into learning making rope and some knots because like as a human, it's it's just like endless in its potential and being able to save you. Like if you have a problem, you can often make cordage and like a knot and like have that have, you know, make that work a solution out. It's such a solution oriented technology. I mean, technology, tech, you can use technology for anything good, bad, you know, like but uh, as far as something to employ for problem solving, rope is really helpful. Yeah, Elon um, Musk would have a hard time trying to ruin this one. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so um, I, I want to ask, um, so say I want to make, uh, I don't know, a basket. How, like, how much do I need to harvest of a plant to do that? And I know that's like super vague. You know, but there's some interesting, I just like, I'm wishing I have it off the top of my head. It's like, you know, you can look at flax technology where they were sort of documenting a lot of this. They're like, this acre provides us two shirts and three bags. <laughs> like there, there, I think there's some interesting things uh, that that information is out there. It's also just depressingly, it's depressing in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so bark fibers, I'll just say, bar bark fibers, you can get like armfuls. <clears throat> so this is basswood. These are rolls of basswood. These have not been processed yet. I'm just looking around for where basswood is. Um, 
And here's some rough basswood fibers. And I mean, this would, it, it produces so much, but what you have to do is you have to peel the bark out, which is really easy to do in the springtime, uh, early summer. And then you need to um, process them so that you can release the fibers themselves. I think this is just kind of a cool technology side. So just to talk about that for a second, you can biologically ret, the term is retting, R-E-T, and really it's a controlled rotting. And it kind of is like, biologically, it's kind of like a fermentation to me in some ways. So you can biologically ret them or you can chemically ret them. And so you can put these fibers in, um, in moisture with oxygen and that's warm. So however you like affix those variables, it could be like a shallow pond or it could be a river, what have you. The bacteria will come in and eat all the soft sugars and they'll leave the cellulose. And so that's how you can get a lot, uh, or you can chemically wrap them with a ash water solution where you're making a really basic solution, sort of like a light lye and cook and process them. And that will also break down the soft sugars and then you'll get heaps of fiber. So to make a basket with basswood is much more of a feasible project than say to spin the dainty, strong, durable, beautiful fibers of dog bane or stinging nettle that can yield you like, you know, I mean, that's, yeah. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> it's yeah, very, it's well, very tough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, and there's, you know, I mean, it, it's like a whole other thing to learn too uh, I've woven some bags and I would approach it a little bit differently and more intelligently, like work-wise, I think. But here are some, like this basswood little bag, um, you could, uh, this basswood beer cozy, <laughs> it's like, uh, did not take me very long, you know? And like, I was able to make enough cordage that this was a workable project. This also was one, and this is sort of a replication on Utsi's knife sheath. Um, and so these are small projects. All I, I know is you must have the best parties if you've got <laughs> basswood beer koozies. <laughs> uh, I really beer koozies and mason jar covers are like the best basketry project goals, especially when learning things. You know, and it, it can be root beer if you want to, wherever you are at. Uh, <clears throat> So, you know, to say how much is really hard and, and like the difference in me doing this in a single ply or a two ply is significant. So single ply yeah. for the win <laughs> in time. Yeah, saves you a lot of time. Yeah, except that it's less durable. So then do you save time in the end with more fixing and repairing? You know, are you going to, are you going to, you have the sheep and then you're going to shear them and then you're going to clean it and you're going to, pick your wool and then you're going to card it and then you're going to knit that sweater. Are you at that point going to be like single ply is easier or are you going to two ply it or three ply it? And then you have to, oh, learn yeah, I'm, to I'm getting buried in that sweater when it, when it's done, <laughs> like that is it. I'm going to own like three sweaters and it's going to be the three I made. And that is, that's where we're at. Yeah. I'm just learning how to darn myself. And I just think, Oh my gosh, this is the coolest. And also yet another skill. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this was awesome and interesting. And I now I've got some willow trees in my backyard that I'm like thinking about shaving now. Just you have willow work. trees. Are you going to yeah. or coppice or pollard them or? Yeah, they're already, uh, they're on their third year of the cycle of coppice. So they're, they need to get trimmed. It's the, the fattest ones are about like five inches in diameter. Um, so, so they're due. So oh, there's nice. some, some stuff that's going to come down and I definitely want to, I've, I've got a couple other projects in mind, but I also am like, I could use that bark. <laughs> you could, I mean, weaving willow bark, that has, that's totally different than what I'm talking about too. Like, so here's birch bark and here's palm sheath. This is what you're gonna do with willow bark and you can bust these out. Uh, uh, uh. Whereas, whereas this bag probably took me like, I don't know, like, hun like over a hundred hours. This might have taken me four. <laughs> I like four. Yeah. This I can one, do four. This is your friend. Willow bark is a super cool material to, to weave a basket with. So like as much as like when I think of cordage and I'm talking of soft fiber technology, barks and weaving is really, really great. 
really, really accessible and you can make something. You can make a mason jar beer koozie in no time. There you go. That's <laughs> all I how, really need. Yeah, this is how I'm going to sell skills now. Do you need a beer koozie? Like, <laughs> yeah. What if you're in the woods with a ice cold beer and like you, it's just too cold out. You need to have like a koozie right now. Right what are now. you going to do? Yeah, there's no leaves for you to. Yeah. <laughs> The way but to do it. I will, the skills have to apply to like people's lives actually and so this is the thing you know like this is the only skill that i think that you can really use a phone app for is to get those phone apps where you learn knots and they have the di you know like the moving diagram that is useful for when you're standing in the line and you know living your modern life yeah exactly like mm -hmm. i I am so jealous of all the high school kids today that are learning how to tie a tie with YouTube. <laughs> like it was a whole other animal when I was in high school. I've never successfully done it. <laughs> I bet you can tie a tie. You teach me how to weave a basket and I'll teach you how to tie a tie. We'll be there even. Go. Okay, good. Skills. All good. right. Good. <laughs> uh, so for yeah, folks that enjoyed. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, you broke sorry. up. You broke up. I, yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying if there's anything else I can answer. Oh, sure. So um, hopefully if anyone has any questions, they'll drop them in the comments. Sounds like some other people have uh, enjoyed the conversation we've had. Uh, for folks that want to either go to your school and learn some stuff or they want to support the work you're doing, uh, where do you want to send them? I would say that, you know, as a school, we're located in Vermont and we teach a number of classes. A lot of them tend to be weekend based or they could be more long term, more immersive. We have a few nine month programs. Anyhow, you can check us out at rootsvt.com. We have some YouTube videos. We're not particularly like there. There's some YouTube videos you can check out, especially if you're into cordage. There's one that really uh, shows me on the landscape and going through the whole process to spinning and then uh, weaving and starting that bag that I was just showing. So you can kind of explore that more. We're really open as a school. And so <clears throat> just feel free to hit us up with questions. We're really into it. We really like chatting with people, um, you know, whether it's plant questions or tracks or what have you, just, you know, no, no need to feel shy. And uh, yeah, you can find us here and there. But yeah. Um, and you guys are on Instagram, right? And we are on Instagram, although, I, you know, I've been very quiet lately, but uh, you're definitely busy. there. I'm busy. Yeah. Um, last question. I'm going to put you on the spot, but do you guys have a Venmo if people want to throw you a couple bucks for your time? Oh, no, but thank you. We have okay. a Patreon that we're really poor at using. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you... we had a baby. I didn't know. Did anyone, did, does anyone know that there are like a ton of work? Oh my God. Mine are easy. I don't do anything. I just walk away when they cry. Oh my god! <laughs> really threw me for how, how old? Oh, she's over a year. I don't oh, know. Like I yeah. have no use anymore. <laughs> yeah, mine are six and four, and I'm just like, why are you still talking? Like, haven't why? If you can talk, move out. Like, please, I'm done. <laughs> so you know, now we're starting. I feel like footing is getting underneath us, and um, yeah, you'll see our, it's us more present online now. But yeah, awesome. Well, yeah, thanks. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this was great. For people that are interested, Root School on Instagram. Uh, go check out their Patreon. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was super fun for me. And now, like I said, I'm probably going to go. I'm going to be messaging you probably in like a month and a half being like, I have all this bark. What do I do? So That's just so be prepared. I'm going to have like a garage full of it. It's going to be bad. <laughs> Perfect to put your kids on. They're really, this is, this is prime, prime skill for them. Keep them distracted. I like yeah. it. Thanks, Andy. I really appreciate it. Yeah. it really Thank great. you. This is great. Bye. Right. Bye.